Climax. Tonight, starring Wendell Corey, Gene Hagen, Harry Carey Jr., James Gregory, Harry Towns. This is Granton Rice, talking to you from the press box of the New York Yankee Stadium, where in just a little while, the ceremonies honoring Lou Gehrig will get underway. I've been asked to tell you, as briefly as I can, a little bit about the man, Lou Gehrig, and why upwards of 60,000 fans and countless celebrities from all walks of life are here today to pay final tribute to the iron horse of baseball. Today, at the age of 36, Lou is a very sick man, perhaps a dying man. But let's turn away for a brief moment from the shattered iron horse we see here today for a brief look at the Garrick you and I, and especially Lou, would want you to remember. 1927. Lou's second full season as a Yankee, a batter marked for greatness. At the beginning, a clumsy fielder he worked at. He learned. They never called him clumsy again. He gave it all he had, at the plate and on the bases. In his time, for all time, one of the most fearsome sluggers in baseball history. And now he became known as the Iron Horse, season after season, game after game, defying sickness, pain, and injury. Among baseball fans everywhere, the fabled Gary, the beloved Gary, the indestructible Gary. It was just a relatively unimportant early season ball game. But for Lou, the game was to be a crucial one. There's two down on the top of the ninth. The bases jammed with the White Sox, and a base hit now could win it all. So the Yankees are in serious trouble. Their ball game's in jeopardy. There's a sign. There's a stretch. Pitch. It's a bounding ball down the first baseline. Gehrig is up. No, it's by him. It's into right field for a base hit. He couldn't come up with the ball. It's a tough break, folks. It was a sharply hit ball. Let's say that Blue just missed making a nice play. Me a ball game. What do you mean take it slow? Mac ought to bench the guy. I mean it. For the good of the team, he ought to get benched. He's through. You think he'd bench himself for crying out loud? Though so he's played in over 2,000 games in a row. What are we supposed to do? Eat that record of his if it costs the pennant this year? I mean, we've got to think of ourselves too, you know? You talk awful loud for a little guy, Rusty. Anybody wants to hear what I got to say, Dickie, I'll say it right to his face. And that includes the great Garrick. Swung on before for telling the truth? For telling the truth, Rusty? He lost me a ball game this afternoon. We lost the ball game this afternoon. We, meaning the Yankees. It was my ball game to win, a lousy ground ball. How many ball games did you win last year, Rusty? I was in the bullpen half the season. Yeah, but you took your share of the World Series, though, that Lou helped the win, didn't you? Look, I ain't saying he wasn't a great ball player. All I'm saying is he ain't helping the team now. I booted one for you, kid. I'm sorry. Look, look, look. I ain't, I ain't griping about losing a ball. Why don't you just button your lip? Well, yeah. You just button your lip. Tell the master. 
Well, I do be throwing something at me. Throw it back. <laughs> Stay gone. That's Dizzy Dean on the mound. You know, I've seen stars. this film over Getting 20 times, and he hasn't and struck you again. out yet. <laughs> There it goes. Loud line drive. Time. It may go all the way. <laughs> hey, Ellie, come on in here. Come on, Ellie, hurry it up, will you? Now, you too, Maggie. Shut the door. Those steaks will be burnt. Never mind the steaks. Just close the door, will you? That's Dizzy Dean on the mound for the National League All-Stars. He's getting ready to blow that fast one past the mighty Gary. Now, watch the feet, honey. There it goes. The low line drive that may go all the way. Well? Well, it seems to me you were stepping into the ball. That's right, I was. But now I'm so anxious to hear them crowding that plate and they're throwing them in close. I don't even have to look at that film we've been taking this week. I know that's it. I'm crowding it. That could be. I know it is. Look, I'll show you. I mean, here's the plate. I got the, and I just keep inching it. And I'm inching it. And they throw me in a close one and I pop it up. But if I'll get back here... Dig in and stay here. That same inside pitch. Right on the fat of the bat. Look, honey, I'll, I'll show you the stuff we took this week. Mrs. Gary, if we don't get with... Uh, look, Maggie, you don't have to hang around. We'll be at least an hour. Oh, I don't mind. Oh, come on out. You're not off. Get going. Okay. Well, I got a couple of tickets to the opera. Are you interested? Aren't you? Uh... I don't think so, no. Okay. Mrs. Garrick, he's been looking at those films for over a week now. What's he trying to find? The guy who hit the home run off Dizzy Dean. Ready in two shakes. Don't think I have to be playing all the time? Put it on for you. I thought you liked it. I do. Who wants to live in Carnegie Hall? You know, maybe I should have married Toscanini. I could have, you know. He's been after me for years. But I look at the guy and I ask myself, how many homers did he hit last year? <laughs> oh, look who's laughing. The way I'm hitting, I could be using the baton. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. The dour Dutchman finally got off a good one. You know, I think I'd better call Granny Rice. Maybe he could use it in his column tomorrow. The heck with that. We'll sell it to Jack Benny. <laughs> oh, you are a sneaky one, Gary. Elliot, it should be over if I... If I just can't hit anymore. I can't play ball anymore, Ellie. I, I swear to you, I'll make life good for you. I mean it, Ellie. I'll, I'll learn to do something else. We'll have wonderful times together, so you won't be bored with me. You big stupid Dutchman! You shut up! You hear me? Oh, I dope you, Lou. Lou, the first time I met you six years ago. The, that's when I started living. Don't you know that? I'm, I mean, you're it. You're the works. Don't you know that? It hasn't got anything to do with your batting average or music or anything like that. You got that straight? Come on, say it. Now look me in the eye and say it. I love you, Ellie. And who does the smiling Irishman love? Oh, Ellie. Come on, say it or I'll... Smiling Irishman loves the dour Dutchman. Don't you ever forget that, Gary. Hey, Ellie, the steak's burning. Thought I told you to shut up. <laughs>
I've got a right to sing the blues. I've got a right to be low down. I've got a right to hang around. Down around the river. A certain man in this old town is dragging my poor heart around. I've got the right to sing the blues. I've got a right. Opera tickets, is it? I'll give you opera <laughs> tickets. Any time at all. I liked it. So did Charlie. Charlie? What happened to Sam? That for Sam. That Carmen sure is a crazy gal, isn't she? Yeah, you might say that. <laughs> oh, that's hot. You might say that. <laughs> give them that a yell, will you? Right. Coffee time. I'm coming. How's he feeling? Yeah, first time since the season opened, he slept the night through. Did he find out what he was doing wrong from those pictures? Well, he... Thinks he may have been crowding the plate. But, but you don't think so, do you? Everybody on the team from Mac on down has been studying his batting for him. He's not doing anything different from the way he ever did it. And he hits one and it's an easy fly ball. Mrs. Garrig, he's 36 years old. And he's been playing ball day in and day out for 14 years. Over 2,000 games, and he never missed a one. I'll give you one guess. Opus 711, Duke Ellington. Ellie, we're going to have to get rid of her. Huh? She's got no culture. Four or five. Make it a half a dozen. Throw in some bacon, too. Waffles? You talk me into it. Be about your business, girl. I got a train to catch. Good morning, Eleanor Twitchell Gehrig. Good morning, Henry Lewis Gehrig. And who do you love this morning? The Dower Dutchman. And who does the Dower Dutchman love? The smiling Irishman. I married the genius. See if these will hold you. Yeah, not for long. Ellie, I'm going to snap out of it. I've got a feeling. You know, I always did hit good in Detroit. Well, you just forget about the homers, you hear? Just swing to meet the ball and the base hits will start falling in there. That's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, I've got it all doped out. I was thinking about it while I was shaving. I've been getting in my head that I'm weak. So I I stand up there and I, I, I swing real hard. I, I swing too hard. And I'm off balance up there. I really think that's what it is. What do you think, Ellie? I think I love you. Oh, no, no, really, Ellie. I, I mean, I really got it figured out. I've been going around moping like the world was coming in. And I'm in a batting slump. I've had it before and I've got out of them. And I'll get out of this one, too. Let me get some butter. Right, I've got some salve in the medicine chest. Ellie, I didn't even feel it. Huh? Could have burned it to the bone. I didn't feel it, Ellie. Uh, I'm going to get started. I'm uh, trained to catch. Lou! No, Ellie. I'm not going to see a doctor. Now, we've been over that a dozen times. There's nothing wrong with me, Ellie. There's nothing wrong with a few base hits won't cure. I'm a little tired and I'm I'm nervous and I'm in a I'm in a slump. That's that's all it is, Ellie. I'm I'm just in a slump. Motion about a little spilled coffee and batting slump. By a couple of good days, I'll be hitting them so that they'll make me use one of those batons. So I won't kill somebody. Right, huh? Right. I'll call you after the game, honey. Bet you dime, I get three hits. No bet. Oh, 
Hello, get in Mr. Dickey's room, please. Bill Eleanor. Look, no, no, Lou just left. No, look, Bill, there's something wrong with the guy. Something very wrong. You just keep your eye on him, you see, and if anything happens, you... I don't know, like what? He seems to be losing his strength. He, he burned himself and he didn't feel anything. Bill, you, you get him to see a doctor. I mean, you make him see a doctor because... I'm, I'm afraid he's sick. Seve on third, DiMaggio on first. The Gehrig special right now will put the Yankees one run to the good here in the top of the line. Who's had a rough day so far? What a slow start for the big guy. But the last right now would make up for a lot of that. There's the stretch, the pitch. It's a fly ball to right field, and it just didn't have enough. So that snuffs out the rally, and Detroit wins it 3 to 1. For well, the Bengals, three runs on eight hits and one error. And for well, the Yankees, one run on six hits and one error. Another tough loss for the Bronx Bombers. An especially rough one for Lou Gehrig, who just can't seem to get started this season. Another 10 feet would have been over the first yeah, one all run. Pretty good. Oh, just one of those tough breaks. The guy's got lots of power. He's going to hit the ball again. You can't say it's not that. He's lost his power. What more proof does a guy need for Pete's sake? Hold it down. Now he hit that one right on the nose. If I hit a ball that hard, it would sail right out of the park. So for him, it's a can of corn for the right fielder. I tell you, the guy's lost his power. I hit about five like that last year. They get up on that wind and die. This ballpark's real rough for that, Lou. I mean it, Lou. The wind blowing the other way, you'd have, it'd have dropped in there for a base hit easy. Even the weather's against me, eh, Bill? You're in a slump, Lou. Everything goes wrong when you're in a slump. You know that. The man's had it. He's done. Kaputs. Hey, Lou, can let me pick that movie tonight when... Wait a minute, Bill. If there'd been anybody else, Mac would have had him on the bench a long time ago. He keeps on his way. We'll be fighting to keep out of the cellar. You right, Bill? My hurting team. You're in a slump. That's not the question, Bill. Well, he doesn't answer those questions, Lou. Billy's got enough to do behind the plate without worrying about the other guys covering the positions on this team. And that goes double in spades for every man on this ball club. Now, if there's anybody here who feels I'm being overworked, thinks maybe I need a little help managing this team, let's hear from him. But before he starts shooting off his mouth, he better be pretty doggone sure he's batting over 400, or if he's a pitcher, he's pitching nothing but shutouts. Now, the floor is open to suggestions. Nah. Lou, I've told you every day since this slump started that you're my first baseman. Now, if you don't feel you can handle the job, you come and tell me. I'll answer your question. Hey, uh, a little extra workout tomorrow, Mac? Sure. You can get somebody to throw to you. Thanks. got no call eating me out just because the guy tries to tell the truth. Why don't you grow up a little, son? Don't you think Mike knows the truth? Don't you think we know it? Don't you think Lou knows it, too? Well, if he knows he's finished, then why doesn't he bench himself? When you've played for 14 years without missing one game, 
When you're half the ball player that Lou Gehrig was, ask me that question then if you have to. Better get a move on. I don't want to miss a single shooting. Got a beat, Bill. Well, there's nothing like a good old double feature for what ails you. Take a rake, take a rain check, Bill. Oh, now look, I'm treating. And when Dickie treats, boy, I'll cut it out. What's the matter? I, I crippled or something? Huh. I'm just kidding, Lou. I've done that, you've done it back. Heck, I wouldn't want to count the number of times. Want to belt me one right here, Bill? Nope. How about a good swift kick? Free, hmm? I just want you to go to the movies with me, that's all. You know I'm scared of the dark. I'll be with you in 30 seconds. Lou, if you just want to sit around, maybe read or something? I thought you were treating, Dickie. Hello? New York, calling Mr. William Dickie. I'm speaking. I've got your party, New York. Go ahead. Bill, Eleanor, look, uh, I don't want Lou to know that it's me. Is he there? Uh, yeah, yes, Dave. It's good hearing from you. Bill, I have Dr. Graham here with me now, and I've told him Lou's symptoms, and Bill, he thinks it's very, very important that Lou have a complete checkup, and right away. Bill? Well, what can I do? How stubborn he is. He won't listen to me, but well, I thought if you talked to him, Bill, you might get him Billy? to go. I don't want you to ever pull a stunt like that again. Do you hear me? Now, do you hear me, Ellie? Yes, I hear you, Lou. When I feel so bad I need a checkup, I'll be the first one to know it. Lou, this is Dr. Graham. Lou, you're acting like a child. All we want you to do is take a few days off, fly up to Minnesota, and then... Oh, I take a few days off? What's the matter with everybody? Well, you'd think I was... We haven't got an open day on the schedule for... I'm in a slump, that's all. It would look great, wouldn't it? In 14 years, I quit cold just because... There's nothing wrong with me, Doc. Well, I'm... I'm not going to take any day off. Now, get that straight. Tell Ellie to get that straight, too. Nothing wrong with me that a... That a good day at bad wouldn't cure. Crazy for a minute there. Old oh, piano legs, Gary. Oh. Boy, a minute there. He's been at it an hour now. How's he doing? Come on, Rusty. Let him take his swings in peace. Listen, I want to see him do good just like everybody else. Yeah, you've been beaten. Come on, come on, come on. Let's not act like a tourist. Well, thank you. Hey, what's the matter? Now you're hitting them, Lou. Slow and easy. Okay, Hankus. Keep that ball up, will you, Hank?
Yeah. Yeah. Back and bring the team staying in there. That's the lineup. Can't make it, can I? I just can't make it. of all time and beyond doubt the most durable athlete in the history of sport. Yesterday benched himself after a fabulous 14-year stretch during which Lou played in 2,130 consecutive ball games. A record which has not and will not be threatened. Although the Yankee management and Garrick himself claims that the benching is a temporary measure, those of us who've watched Lou's pathetic performance this season feel that it may be the end of the line of the fabled iron horse. Send in, Mr. Garrig. Hello, Lou. Good morning, Doc. Oh, uh, that won't be necessary today, Lou. <laughs> After five days here, every time I see a doctor, I just automatically start to strip. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Lou. I take it it won't break your heart to leave us, is that right? Oh, not that you haven't treated me well, but... Well, that's all over and done with now, Lou. What's the final score? Well... Uh, you might say... We're at bat at the end of nine innings. We're all tied up. Five days of test. Mm -hmm. No, uh... Let's see how I can put this to you. You can put it to me straight, Doc. Yes, Lou, I believe I can. Well... When I said we are tied at the end of nine, uh, that sounds like a poor analogy. That's really not too far from the truth. What I'm trying to say, Lou, is a game that's tied can go on 10, 15, 20 innings. It depends on so many factors that... These uh, extra innings, you figure one inning for one year? You could look at it that way. Do you look at it that way? And after, say, 15 innings, is there a chance of winning? Or do we 
just play it out as long as it goes. But in the end, we have to lose? Well, not necessarily, I know I could die of heart failure tomorrow, Doctor. It's... Well, this other thing. Is it going to kill me? We'll be able to tell you more about that, Lou, in time. After we watch it progress, it's a rare type of paralysis. But somebody like you, with your body, your will... Is anyone who's uh, had this thing... Has anyone else ever beaten it? Well, has anybody else ever played 14 full seasons of baseball without missing a single game? Hmm? You know, it's funny. It ought to be about 8,000 questions to ask. I guess so. Well, there's no hurry, Lou. You'll be hanging around for a couple of days. You'll have to tell Mac and Ed Barrow. How am I going to tell Ellie? Oh, I know she's been making a nuisance of herself. She's Irish, you know, and, well, she's got that temper, and when she wants something, she wants it pretty bad. So when she calls you again and starts pumping you, why, you just tell her I've got a fighting chance. We did not. Rogers, type this on an official form, send it to the Yankee office in New York. Mr. Edward Barrow. After a complete and careful examination, June 13, 1939 to June 19, it's been found that Mr. Lou Gehrig is suffering from amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, type of illness, which involves the motor pathways and cells of the nervous system. And Dr. Adams' office. Doctor, it's Mrs. Gary. I'll take it. Mrs. Gary? Doctor, I know I said I wouldn't call it till five, but I... Well, that's quite all right. <clears throat> I have the reports here in front of me. I was just dictating a release for the newspapers which would define the nature of your husband's illness. It, it's bad, isn't it? It's quite serious. I want to know, Doctor. Well, that's difficult to say, Mrs. Gehrig, as I was telling your husband just a few minutes. I told you not to tell Lou and... I told Lou that he had a fighting chance. Sorry, thank, thank you, Doctor. Thank you for telling him that. And now, please tell me the truth. I've never had the privilege of meeting you, Mrs. Gehrig. But I think you can take this. I think it's something that you must know. Mrs. Gehrig? I'm still with you, Doctor. Well, your husband is suffering from... A disease which we hope one day we'll be able to cure. However, at the present time, we know very little about it. Mrs. Gehrig? How long? Well, that's hard to say. But with his body, the, the shape he's in, why... Is there anything I can do? Try to keep his mind occupied. Try to keep him happy. Thank you, Doctor. And now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better hang up. We're going to keep him happy, you hear me, Maggie? We're going to have parties and we're going to have people. 
Gonna have so many people, we'll have to put a revolving door in the joint. We're gonna keep them happy, understand? Today, I thought old Biscuit Fan's hair would grab himself a bat and put himself in the pinch head. Don't kid yourself. I thought about it. All right. <laughs> I'll never forget the time we were playing an exhibition game in Norfolk, Virginia. You know, this rookie kid was pitching for them. A big, tall, lanky, drink of water type lad. He, well, kind of reminded me of Billy Dickey here in a way. <laughs> Thanks, Maggie. Everything okay here? Oh, just great, Ellen. Just great. How about you, Gary? Well, Gary's just fine. Huh? <laughs> anyway, about the first three innings, you know. Boys are going up there, they're hitting the dirt every time this kid winds up. By the time the fifth inning rolls around, everybody's down on their knees praying to get out of the ball game alive. <laughs> I mean, they're walking up there and they're not digging in. They stand about six feet away from the plate, which is, well, it's the worst thing in the world they could do, you know? Because the way this kid's chucking them in, the safest place in that ballpark was right in the middle of the plate. I mean, he's not even coming close to it, you know? <laughs> Except old Fearless here. Oh, he's digging in there like this kid knows where the ball is going. <laughs> and twice in a row, Lou's on his pants, and this kid is scared green. He keeps yelling in, I'm sorry, Mr. Gary. Gosh almighty, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lou sort of dusts himself off, and he weighs back, and he says, Well, that's all right, son. It's all in a day's work. <laughs> and then, pow! I thought somebody had been shot. Lou hits the dirt. This kid throws his arms up in the air, and he starts screaming, I killed Lou Gary. I killed Lou Gary. I'm halfway out of the dugout with a bat in my hands. I don't know whether to carry Lou off or belt that kid one. And here's old Lou. He's just sort of dusting himself off and picking himself up off the ground, and he's shaking his head at that kid, and he's saying, you better watch that fastball, son. You're liable to hurt someone. Yeah, as I remember it, the kid turned out to be a pretty fast country-style pitcher. Wasn't he it? was, Mac. Remember in Chicago when we were yeah, playing? Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's another story another time. Well, he... I'm sorry to break up the festivities, but we've got a little thing called a ball game hey, we got to play. Wait a minute. Where are you rushing to? It's early. Well, maybe for well, you. Well, that's what we get for bringing the manager along with us. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Good night, Lou. Good night, Thanks for sitting. Good night, Lou. Good night. Wait in the car. Good night. Thanks for coming over. Loved it. Man, Lou was a wonderful party. Thanks for having the guys oh, over. Man, it's they, always wonderful. Well, they wonderful. had a great time, and you know that um, another business I was talking to you about? Well, kick it around a little with Ellie, will you? And let me know how you feel. Oh, Mac, I don't know. Come on, I don't think come so. Come on, now, kick it around. Whatever way you decide is all right with me. Just uh, let me know. I'll, let you, I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Good night, Whitey. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for coming, Mary. Well, thanks for the use of the hall. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Yeah. Was it fun? I love them one and all. Good. Why, what a mess. I'd like to see a little less of them, a little more of my wife. Maggie, why don't you just leave that stuff till the morning, hmm? All right. Good night, folks. Good night, Maggie. Kelly, come here. Why don't you sit right down here and hold your hands in your lap? I'm going to sit over here where I can see you. And I'm going all over. You sit down. I'm going to talk to you. Do it. Okay. Fire when ready, Gridley. Well, now, Ellie, I. I don't know exactly uh, how to Lou, say this. Would you it. like some music? Well, Ellie, I, I just want to talk. Is all that serious? Well, no, not yet, but. Ellie, when. I first heard about this thing. I, I was scared silly. Well, there's no reason to be. I mean, the doctors well, all say. Never mind the doctors, darling. I said I was scared, till I began to realize that, well, no matter what the book said about this disease, even if I, well, even if the odds are against us ever beating it, it wouldn't scare me. It doesn't scare me, Ellie. As long as it doesn't scare you. Do I look scared, darling? Well, I'm not. I'm not because the, the, the simple truth of the matter is that I know you can beat this thing. I know it. So I, I wish you'd stop thinking about... That's just what I was trying to say, honey. I don't think about not beating him. 
No, as a matter of fact, it doesn't really seem very important as long as we live our lives together just the way we always have. Oh, with a few changes, of course. Lou, I... Oh, I, I know. I can't play ball anymore. Well, I can adjust to that. But I don't like to have to look across the crowded room to find my wife. We don't need parties, Ellie, to shut out the truth. Truth can't hurt us, honey. Not as long as we're together. No more parties. <laughs> no, Ellie, I, I don't mean no more parties. Lou, what do you want me to do? Well, honey, I... I want you to stop asking me what I want to do. I want you to tell me what you want to do, and I... I want you to argue with me, and I want you to tell me I'm a big, stupid Dutchman when I'm wrong. Anything else, Dictator? Well, Mac and Ed Barrow, and, well, Granny and some of the boys at the press, they, uh, they want to have a day for me. Yes, I know. What do you think? Who I think? Well, I think if, if I say yes, you'll brood about it, and then you'll sit up all night trying to write a speech, and you won't be able to think of anything to say, and then you'll blame me for getting into the whole mess. And then he'll decide it was all a giant plot to embarrass you because you think you really don't rate the date because nobody cares that much about you. In other words, you think I ought to let them do it? I think you better let them do it. First game of today's traditional 4th of July doubleheader has just ended, ladies and gentlemen, and the Yankees lost it to the Senators 3-2. to two. There are upwards of 60,000 fans jamming this ballpark, and most of them viewed the first game with the same apathy that the Yankees played it. For the first time in this broadcaster's memory, the games themselves are taking a back seat to the between-games ceremony, the tribute to Lou Gehrig. And now, before the ceremonies begin, I'd like to chat with one of Lou's friends. Sitting here beside me is... Brantman Rice, the dean of American sports writers. That'll get you an argument any day in the week. What about this crowd here today, Granny? It's very impressive. Very, very rough on Lou, I'm afraid. I've seen the big guy sculled by a fastball that would decapitate an ox, dust himself off and dig in. But this, standing before a crowd and making a speech, this is murder. Did you help him with his speech? No, sir, I did not. I've heard Lou speak in public half a dozen times. He usually manages a pretty fair job. This is different. Everything is different. This isn't the rock of Gibraltar in baseball pants. This is just a sick man. A very sick man. And he knows that today, for the very first time, he's being honored not for being a great ball player, but for being Lou Gehrig. He could accept honors as a ball player. He knows that he's earned that. But for a guy like Lou, who can't understand being anything else other than a good human being, he can't honestly see what he's done to deserve this. And so, he might not say any more than, thank you. But if he says it in his own way, it would be a better speech than I could write for him if I had ten fingers in each hand. Somebody downstairs says Gary is not want to with it. Billy! Billy! The corridor is knee-deep in reporters. They want in. Oh, they'll have to wait for Mac. What happened, Bill? Uh, beats me. He was sitting here in front of his locker, just sort of staring off into space. And then he got up and went into Mac's office. I asked him what was wrong. He said, can't do it, Bill. I just can't do it. Hey, boys, Lou's coming. Come on. After 14 years, during which Lou rewrote page after page in the baseball record book, we're here to give him his day. Let's make it a good one. Thank you, Grandpa Rice. And Granny, don't go away. Well, the area around home plate is literally swimming with gifts. 
tributes. I won't even attempt to describe them to you now, nor will I try to name all the famous faces that are here. There in a group is one of the greatest baseball teams ever assembled, the 1927 Yankees. You just saw Babe Ruth, Bob Musial. Here's Wade Hoyt, Herb Pinnock. Well, let's leave it at this. There isn't a name in baseball, past or present, who isn't here today to pay tribute to Lou Gehrig. The big Bambino again, Sultan of Swat. Many other dignitaries, some 60,000 of them. That's Joe room. McCarthy making and the presentation. Detroit, Detroit, some time ago, you told me that you thought that you were hindering the chances of the ball club by staying in the ball game. That was a day that I never had to see. Because I never thought that I would... Uh, that is, the time would come when you and I, well, we're not going to part. They say, say I've, I've had a bad had a break. break, break. But when the office when the force, force and the ground keepers, keepers and even the giants, even the giants from across the river, the river when we give our right arm and right feet, feet in a World, World Series, when they remember, when they remember you, you, that's something. That's something. And when you have, when a, you have a, wonderful a wonderful wife, wife who has shown more courage, courage than I ever hoped to have. That's really That's great. Really great. And when you've spent really six, six years, years with a great little manager, manager like Miller like Huggins, Huggins, and the next time, with the finest, the finest smartest, smartest manager, manager in baseball, baseball today, today, Joe McCarthy. McCarthy. And when you have when the you privilege have of privilege. roaming, roaming eating, 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 playing cards, playing cards. And only one of the greatest fellows who ever lived, Bill Dickey. With all this, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I may have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you.